time for Alba Gordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. When it comes to news on 95.1 FM, weather always comes first. Back-to-back systems will produce moderate to heavy snowfall from the northern Rockies, upper Midwest, and even through the northeast over the next few days. Difficult travel conditions are likely in the northern plains. Showers and storms are possible in the south, some of which may be strong to severe, the main threats being large hail, damaging winds, and heavy rain. Closer to home, warmer and dry weather for the remainder of the week under high pressure aloft. Strong west winds ahead of a Pacific cold front are expected on Sunday with blowing dust and light mountain snow. Breezy conditions will continue into early next week. We'll have another look at the weather following this news. The Alamogordo White Sands Regional Airport is having an open house coming up. I spoke with Luke. So the airport open house will be Saturday, April 13th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. The EAA Ford Trimotor Tour is bringing their 1929 Ford Trimotor plane, and you can book your flight on flytheford.org. The open house itself is free to attend. Check out the City of Alamogordo Facebook page for details. The City of Alamogordo presents Easter in the Park. This free event is occurring on Saturday, March 30th from 10 until 1 at Washington Park. The Otero County Cooperative Extension Service presents the Kitchen Creation Diabetes Cooking Classes in the month of April. I spoke with Kelly Knight. Well, the classes will be every Thursday afternoon in April. We'll start at 4 o'clock. We'll take about three hours. It'll go to about 7 o'clock. And the format of the class is learning with a registered dietitian who does a lot of the teaching. And we talk about how to manage diabetes, blood sugar levels through meal planning. We talk about carbohydrate serving sizes. We talk about how to plan food groups for the management of blood sugar levels. The classes will take place every Thursday evening from 4 until 7 at the Extension Office throughout the month of April. Classes are free, but seating is limited. For more information, 575-437-0231 or kitchencreations.nmsu.edu. The Oliver Lee Memorial State Park is currently fixing up the house, but that doesn't mean you can't still visit. We spoke with Kate German. We have the Oliver Lee Ranch House on site. We've got a really cool historic area, and it's undergoing renovation. So the inside of the house is closed, but we've had so many people asking that while we're in between phases of the renovations, we're doing guided tours where you at least get to walk around the house and learn about all of the history. Those tours are happening every Saturday at 10 a.m. The Oliver Lee Memorial State Park is at 409 Dog Canyon Road, 505-660-7381 for more information. Easter is going to be big this year at the Alamo Senior Center. Brittany had the details, so I gave her a call. We're having our Easter egg coloring on March the 26th in the dining room at 10 o'clock. On March 27th in the dining room, we're having our bonnet contest at 11 o'clock. Tell me about the Easter bonnet contest. I mean, wh- what are we looking for? Oh my gosh, these ladies have a lot of fun. They decorate their hats and their bonnets. We get all kinds of beautiful, beautiful hats that they make on their own. And it's a big turnout every year. We get at least 10 to 15 participants. Well, awesome. Sounds like there's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have the Easter egg hunt on the 29th, again in the foyer of the center. And Bring your own basket or bag. So are there any prizes for the Easter egg coloring, the bonnet contest, and the Easter egg Um, There are. There are gift cards available to whoever wins. Sounds like a lot of fun. Hey, yeah. one more thing, one more thing. Um, We're accepting candy donations for to fill the Easter eggs for the Easter egg hunt. The Alamo Senior Center is at 2201 Puerto Rico Avenue. Call 575-439-4150 for more information. This is Lieutenant William Skaggs with Alamogordo Fire Department. With grass fire season fast approaching, we would like to remind the citizens of Alamogordo that open burning is only permitted with the proper authorization from Alamogordo Fire Department. If you would like to conduct any kind of open burning within your property in the city of Alamogordo, you must first receive proper authorization through a burn permit with Alamogordo Fire Department. You can apply for a burn permit at 619 Texas Avenue, Monday through Friday. 8 to 5. Well, today is Friday. That means we get a cat chat from Kitty City NM. Hi, this is Kathy Denton with Kitty City NM, and welcome to this week's edition of Cat Chat. 
This week, Kitty City is featuring several cats who are waiting for their forever home. Kitty City has some incredible friends who foster cats and kittens for us. At times, Kitty City is so full that the only way to take in a cat for rescue is to have a foster home. Several of our volunteers open their homes to such kitties. Chicky is a very loving, petite kitty who is almost one year old. Chicky still acts like a kitten. She is playful and energetic. She is also a cuddle bug who will give you little love bites. Chicky is black with large white patches over her chest and belly and has a little whisper of white just below her throat. She is an active girl and looking for a forever friend who will love her pep and energy. Albert is also a foster kitty waiting for his forever home. Albert was rescued about the same time as Chicky and similar in color. It is possible that Chicky and Albert are brother and sister. Albert is also a black cat with white patches on his chest and stomach. Albert plays well with other kitties. However, unlike Chicky, Albert is a much larger cat, but he is also loving and lovable. Both Albert and Chicky are ready for their forever home. Both have been altered and have all of their shots and are microchipped. Please call Kitty City NM at 575-430-1914 to arrange to see Chicky and Albert. Visit Kitty City NM at 56 Stanley Ranch Road to see all of our adorable cats. Or go to our website at www.kittycitynm.com and check out our photos and biographies of all the Kitty City cats. All our kitties are waiting patiently for their forever home. Tomorrow, Saturday, March 23, come see Kitty City NM at the White Sands Mall from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. for our adoption event. We will have lovable cats ready to adopt as well as sweet dogs from Alamogordo Animal Control also ready for adoption. Your forever friend is waiting for you at the Kitty City NM adoption event at the White Sands Mall tomorrow, Saturday, March 23, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. This has been this week's edition of Cat Chat. I'm Kathy Denton, and I will be talking to you next week from Kitty City NM. Kitty City and you, no one loves them better. News from around the state in just a moment. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. Local news from local perspectives from local voices. AlamogordoTownNews.com. Local sports, local events, and local happenings and more. Owned and operated by Second Life Media. We are Otero County. AlamogordoTownNews.com. Heard daily on Crazy KALH Radio 95.1. Direct Creek Plus is the right size book. It's the book if you need a phone book. That's what just one person has to say about Directory Plus. With its red cover, features, colorful yellow pages, and lots more, it's no wonder people all over use Directory Plus. It has so much more information. You can cross-check phone numbers or addresses or pretty much anything. Look on the plus side, Directory Plus. I'm a big fan of Directory Plus. A group of illegal migrants crossed into the U.S. yesterday, according to a video shared by Texas Representative Tony Gonzalez. Border Patrol agents said all the migrants that were at Gate 36 were then taken to a processing center. The Texas Military Department and the Texas Department of Public Safety quickly gained control of that situation and then began work to repair the damage to the fence. These illegal immigrants committed crimes in Texas, and the Department of Public Safety is under instruction to arrest every illegal immigrant involved for committing criminal trespass and destruction of property. The top five nationalities that entered yesterday were from Mexico, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, and Guatemala. It's been nearly two years since the Calf Canyon Hermit's Peak fire devastated communities in northern New Mexico. President Biden promised that the feds would fully compensate every impacted New Mexican, but many say they still haven't seen a dime. Now, we got some lawyers saying they are trying to turn up the heat and hold FEMA accountable. Singleton and Schreiber have been hosting multiple town halls, both online and in Mora, as well as Las Vegas. They say the goal is to answer any questions locals have. And the biggest question they're getting, why is this taking so long? Singleton and Schreiber partner Brian Cologne says getting the funding from FEMA has been a moving target for the last year. The attorneys working on these cases have been getting a variety of answers from FEMA when they ask for clarity. Those who are impacted by the fire are entitled to full compensation under federal and New Mexico law but it's becoming a longer process than expected. We're holding FEMA accountable and making sure that the people of northern New Mexico receive damages not just for trees that went down, not just for structures that went down, 
but for the, the inconvenience, the loss of the enjoyment of their land, the loss of the enjoyment of their community that they'll never have again in their lifetime. Cologne speaking with KLB. Under the act that was passed by our delegation and signed by the President of the United States, it says that victims should be fully compensated under New Mexico law. Lawyers from New Mexico that understand the community are the ones that are best positioned to interpret what that law is, to apply it, and have FEMA compensate those victims. We want an administrator that is from New Mexico, that is a jurist, that is an expert in New Mexico law. FEMA just released updated claim numbers this week, saying that more than 6,000 people have filed 3,000 claims. So far, FEMA has paid out more than $400 million to nearly 2,000 individuals. However, Cologne says there's still billions of dollars sitting unused. He says federal bureaucracy is getting in the way. Singleton and Schreiber are having another virtual town hall on Tuesday evening via Zoom. Defense attorneys for Alec Baldwin urged a New Mexico judge to dismiss a grand jury indictment against the actor in the fatal shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the set of the movie Rust. The indictment in January charged Baldwin with involuntary manslaughter for the killing of Hutchins on October 21st of 2021. Baldwin pled not guilty to that charge. His attorneys, in a new court filing, accused prosecutors of unfairly stacking the deck against Baldwin in grand jury proceedings that diverted attention away from the exculpatory evidence and witnesses. They say that prevented the jury from asserting their obligation to hear a testimony from Director Joel Souza who was wounded in that shooting while standing near Hutchins, as well as assistant director and safety coordinator Dave Halls and props master Sarah Zachary. Prosecutor Kerry Morrissey declined to comment and said a response will be filed in court. Baldwin's motion also asserts that the grand jury received inaccurate and one-sided testimony about the revolver involved in that shooting. Rust armorer Hannah Gutierrez-Reed was convicted by a jury last week in that shooting and is currently being held without bond pending an April sentencing hearing. Involuntary manslaughter carries a felony sentence of up to 18 months in prison and a $5,000 fine. Baldwin was pointing the gun at Hutchins when the gun went off. Baldwin has maintained that he pulled back on the hammer but never touched the trigger. Baldwin is scheduled for trial in July. More than a dozen districts could get new representation in state government with the 2024 local election. Over 100 candidates have qualified to run for seats representing New Mexicans. The deadline for filing to run for election was March 12th. The candidates will compete to try and get elected this fall on Election Day, November 5th. Data shows districts on the western side of the state have more candidates competing for seats in the New Mexico House of Representatives. The New Mexico Secretary of State's office says total candidate numbers this year are similar to previous years, but a good number of current lawmakers have announced that they are not running for re-election. Sports and weather are coming up next. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. They are role models and educators. Their work requires a great deal of time and energy for very little pay. Who are these unsung heroes? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. The simple truth about education-based athletics in New Mexico is this. Without a committed team of coaches and administrators, it just wouldn't be possible. School sports, they bring out the best in all of us. This message presented by the New Mexico Activities Association and the New Mexico Athletic Directors Association. There are 32 gains for New Mexico softball today, including Hobbs at Lovington. 42 gains for New Mexico baseball today, including Capitan at Dora, Redoso at Silver, and Chaparral heads to Gadsden. Your crazy radio spot on weather forecast for the Tularosa Basin today calls for sunny skies. Increasing cloudiness tonight, mostly cloudy tomorrow, winds gusting as high as 29 miles per hour. Your high today in the basin, 74, low tonight of 49, high tomorrow, 75 degrees. In Cloudcroft, sunny skies, winds gusting as high as 20 miles per hour. Increasing cloudiness tonight, mostly cloudy tomorrow, winds will be gusting as high as 34. Your high today in Cloudcroft, 51, low tonight of 35, high tomorrow, 53 degrees. Local breaking news can be found on our website, alamogordotownnews.com, and learn more about Crazy Radio by visiting klhradio.org. Also, check out the Crazy KLH Radio YouTube channel. That's where we post our daily newscasts, complete interviews, and other information which concerns everyone in the Tularosa Basin. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. 
That way you too can remain informed of the goings-on in the Tularosa Basin. That concludes this Friday edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero.